Good evening in London town. It's because it's the afternoon here, and I thought we would do a major chord to start off because I'm majorly excited about this episode. That's right. This is the quarantine concert series. I'm your host, Kabir Segal. This is show number 62. Wow. I can't even count that high in Spanish. And that means Sandra and Camilo, my Spanish professors, have to work harder in teaching me the language. Okay. I can only speak up, I can only count up to 21. So, all right. So, what are we doing? Uh, Every day we're here, 10 p.m. Eastern. And on the weekends, 3 p.m. Eastern matinees. Uh, And that's because all the gigs have gone away. We're practicing physical distancing. And, you know, some states are reopening. I'm I'm here in Atlanta from my parents' house, from the dining room table. And my parents are taking an afternoon nap, taking a siesta. And as I always say, I know my mom secretly watches. So, um, hi, mom. Um, Can you please get off the internet? Because I really need a fast speed connection. Thank you. So some places have reopened, and they're reopening. Like Atlanta, uh, the tra- there's some traffic on this, on outside when you drive outside. Um, but I still think it's going to be a, a while until the gigs come back. I mean, Carnegie Hall has canceled gigs in the 2021. And uh, a lot of people are concerned about going out, and this may be the new normal. So this broadcast was created in earnest to put the spotlight on artists, to put people on the musicians, to put the spotlight on musicians and the incredible virtuosos that lift our spirits throughout the year. And that's what this show is all about. So um, our heart is with the artists. There's so many ways to support the artists. There's always been a relationship between patrons and artists going back to the Middle Ages. So however you can, reach out to artists, go to Patreon, buy the music, stream the music, buy the t-shirts. I have an artist t-shirt on right now. You know, buy the merch, start the fan club. Be the vice president of the fan club. Actually, be the treasurer of the fan club. That's where all the power is. Power is with the money. You want to handle the fi- handle handle the checkbook, right? So, um, you know, that's what I mean. So we got to be there for the artists. Not just the artists. It's a lot of people in the creative community, engineers, producers, promoters, bookers, fan clubs. Everyone's part of this. So we got we to gotta be in this together and, uh, and support each other as best we can. So that's what we're doing. Um, also, I want to say... Thanks to the folks at All About Jazz, uh, our distribution partners. Michael Ritchie started this website in 1995. If you're an artist, go there and make an artist page. If you are a patron, go make a donation. Um, we have to support the jazz ecosystem as much as we can. They're chronicling through some wonderful journalism how the pandemic, how this pandemic is unfortunately affecting so many um you know, legends in the jazz community. We're losing, we've lost so many incredible artists and our, our heart goes out to the families and uh, to our condolences because uh, this is really a, a time of uh, great tragedy. And so if you want to read about some of these incredible maestros, go to All About Jazz. Um, also, uh, we've started a quarantine film series because I'm obsessed. I'm, I'm binge hosting shows. I don't recommend that at home. Don't binge host anything, all right? Binging is not good unless you're binge watching this show. All right. So the Quarantine Film Series is an effort to put the spotlight on filmmakers. These are films that have been accepted to top festivals like South by Southwest and the Tribeca Film Festival, both of which were canceled. So we're talking to filmmakers like Frank, Frank Lacari. He created a film on Jose Feliciano, which was the wonderful guitarist, um, incredible guitarist who wrote Feliz Navidad. So this is, again... Uh, an effort to uh, to help these films get a little bit of buzz because without the festivals, it's hard to get the sales agent. It's hard to get the distributor to acquire and distribute the film. So these are all the films that you'll be seeing in the months ahead. So you would have you know got the first scoop on what's going to be on Netflix and HBO and all those great channels. All right. Um, next up, we have a word of the day. There will be a pop quiz at the end of the uh, session. You will get a prize. The prize will be a puppy handing you a trophy, you know you want that, okay? Um, I've been actually not that impressed with, uh, maybe the words have been too difficult, but not that many people have, people have been getting it. So at the end of the show, I always say, what's the pop quiz? What's the word of the day? And if you can write it quickly, we will recognize you on screen. And Pamela the puppy will give you a trophy. All right, the word of the day. 
Let's look at it. So our artist, the artist today, her name is somewhat embedded in this, Helden, Helden Tenor. Elden Tenor, a robust style of tenor voice, especially suited for heroic operatic roles, often a tenor robusto used for roles in operas. So this world where it is inspired by our artist of the day, because her name starts with an H E. Actually starts with H E L. And there you go. Helden Tenor. Hopefully, hopefully there will be no Helden Tenors during this broadcast. Okay. Next up, where can you find us? You can find us everywhere. That's right. We're on the Facebook. We're also on the Twitter. We're also on the Instagram. On the Instagram, you can see all these wonderful effects. Like right now, I have some eyelashes going on. Um, I'm also on the. We're also on the LinkedIn, and we're on the Periscope. I always like to get my Periscope going. And the YouTube. There's my Periscope. There's also a down Periscope like this. There's also a side Periscope. You ever heard of a side periscope? See? New experiences for all of us. Side periscopes. YouTube, Twitch, Periscope. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. All right. That's it for the spiel. How can you get on the show? Send me a message on Facebook, Instagram. I have a bit of a waiting list, but we will work through the list as carefully and as thoughtfully as possible, and we will make fireworks together. That's right. All right. Now for the best part of the the show where we get to meet the incredible artist. This person is really amazing. And uh, she's a, a band leader, an acclaimed composer um, from Houston, a recent Steinway artist. I've had the great pleasure of working with her. One of the best artists I've ever met, really. She's uh, just performance at the highest level. Top class professional, because she's really easy to work with, too. So um, just I can't say enough good things about her. Actually, I could. I could that's going on and on. But we need, to get, we need to squeeze the interview in. So welcome to the show, the wonderful Helen Sung. Thank you so much for having me. I could just watch you do, I think you should binge intro too. <laughs> we will loop it. We might, that's a good idea. We might just loop these. So uh, tell me first, where are, you, where are you broadcasting from? I'm broadcasting from the epicenter of the epicenter here in Queens, New York City. And it's a beautiful day. It's, I think it's going to be 78 degrees, sunshine and blue sky. Wow. So you're neighbors with Sandra and Camilo, the uh, engineering team. Yes. And I'm so pleased. Thank you so much for bringing uh, us back together. I've recorded at their wonderful studio Soundworks. It might be under a different name now, but they're just top flight. And I really just thank them for the crash course and all yeah. these live streaming. Yeah. It's nice to have uh, nice to have Queens represented so well. Uh, tell me first, how was the quarantine affected? What were you going to do that's been since canceled or postponed? <laughs> Oh, uh, a lot of shows, festivals, tours. Um, I was in the middle of a tour when uh, it kind of disintegrated. And, you know, we, I was in California, actually, in Oakland. And uh, we were on stage. We had just finished the sound check. It was with the wonderful vocalist Cecile McLaurin Salvant. And uh, she was about to come on stage for the sound check. And they came and said, I'm sorry, we have to cancel the show. And it was such, I, I shed a few tears because it was so frustrating because, you know, it, we still had like two shows left. And so there was this back and forth, are we, aren't we? And then um, when they said that, it was just kind of like a knife in the heart. And plus everybody had been getting messages on their phones saying this is canceled, this is canceled, and you're just feeling terrible. But I just have to thank all the angels out there and, uh, you know, Kabir and Michelle and Camille. Uh, the amazing icon Angela Davis. She had was going to come to the show. It was an SF, SF jazz show, so she invited us all over to her house in Oakland. And Cecile and the Ogress. The, the name of the project is called Ogress. It's a jazz operetta that Cecile wrote. We performed it at Angela Davis's house. So how cool is that? It's amazing. <laughs> Cecile is such a an incredible artist, multidisciplinary artist. She's a uh, visual artist as well. And so writer, singer, so wonderful you, you've been able to collaborate with her. And I'm sorry if so many things have been canceled. Are you just sort of waiting and seeing? Or, you, or has anything been rebooked and rescheduled? Some things have been re rescheduled for next year. Um, I think the tough thing about the arts is it's all about community and being close proximity, right? And being rubbing elbows and hugging. And, and uh, that is 
I think that is in question for the foreseeable future. Yeah. And so um, I love how the arts community just starts adapting. Like, I think that's something I, I've really appreciated in a deeper way, not just artists, hum humanity too, just the ability to yeah. adapt and to continue uh, moving forward. And I, it was really interesting. I have a cousin who's a visual artist and they had a round table where they were discussing what they would like to see change in the artistic world coming up. And uh, people said some very lovely things, you know, the seven o'clock PM Eastern time where everybody's, you know, shouting out their windows to express their gratitude for the front care, uh, frontline healthcare workers and New Yorkers, she, she said, are not known for their gratitude. <laughs> like we like to complain, right? So it's just, you know, I hope things like that, a, a renewed, renewed sense of community and, uh, and yeah, just also just a real proof of how important the arts are, how important music is. Yeah, 100%. What is a day like in the life of Helen Sung quarantined? Do you have, are you like eating the same thing every day? Are you, <laughs> are you going for walks? What's the routine that you've established? Okay, first you have to put on your armor to go fight to get into the grocery stores. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Um, well, you know, surprisingly, I'm starting to uh, do increasing number of live streams. So it's been an adventure learning about external mics, USB mics that I didn't know about TRS, TRRS connections and just making do with the technology that I have, which actually can do quite a bit. That's been a really amazing education so that I do quite a bit of that. And um, I love I live right around the park, uh, corner from a wonderful park, which has been a lifesaver. You know, spring is just alive and just seeing flowers and birds and trees and the sky. It's just a, it's a real, uh, I call them my sanity walks. And um, of course, practicing on this instrument and then just trying not to give in all the time to this, I feel like this undercurrent of pressure to be productive. Because I think that's something that's very American, you know, getting it done, making it happen. And uh, something like this has forced me to stop in many ways. And it really made me realize, oh, my God, I was always on the go. And, you know, in different states and different cities and different countries even. And even though that's a lot of that's a typical, uh, you know, for many artists, that's normal. And I think it's in some ways, I don't know how sustainable that is over the long term or how really quote unquote natural that is. So I'm trying to be grateful and take advantage of this time to rest and well said. Yeah, to heal on many levels and yeah, well also said. just to listen. You know, I'm listening to music in a different way because it's not always, oh, I'm off to the next thing. Oh, next thing I gotta focus on this. So yeah, yeah. well, I think that the pause is and the respite um, is actually can be a nice thing and. I mean, I'm even thinking it would be nice once a year to have sort of a month to, I mean, without the public health crisis, but actually to stay at home and just go within. And one of the things I've been doing is listening to your music and meditating Thank on your you. music. So, so would you, what would you like to begin your performance with today? I think I'm going to start with something that's really new. Uh, it's, I was asked to write music with the theme of just covering a, a span of time. It could be a lifetime. It could be a day. And uh, I was thinking about that moment when, you know, that time when I realized personally that, oh, it's not all about you and just how, how shocking that was <laughs> and disillusioning. And then you turn the corner. And so I wrote this song called Everybody's Waltz. And I think I, I, I like that because I like the, you know, it's amazing to have this experience when technology is keeping us connected on such a granular level, right? This couldn't have happened even maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago. And, um, and then I'm going to segue off of that to a tune by the great pianist Jerry Allen called uh, Feed the Fire. So my, my tune, Everybody's Waltz, followed by Jerry Allen's Feed the Fire.
Oh. <laughs> so sad. Amazing. <laughs> wow. That was like. Oh, thank you. Oh. Actually, hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Look at all the love we're getting. Powerful. <laughs> applause. <laughs> Bravo. Oh, Michael Costin. Heidi Gleiser. Uh, That's right. If you, if you do it on the screen, I'll do it in person. So we have this, oh, we have some hearts. I want to see more emojis. And by the way, everyone watching at home, tell us where you're watching from. Helen is obviously in Queens. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Tell us where you're watching from because all the places that she cannot play, we want to know where she can, where she is, uh, where she could be playing right now, where she is playing right now. So tell us yeah. where you are. Um, that was amazing, and uh, I love how I love your touch. I love how you uh, perform your artistry. I want to talk a little bit first. Congratulations on being named a Steinway artist. That's a big deal. Tell us. Um, Thank you. Tell us how I feel about that. Well, gosh, it's you know the piano tradition in any genre is crushing. <laughs> it's just so many giants, you know, Steinway has been very kind to me for many years. And uh, they, when they were located at their original location on 57th between 6th and 7th Avenue, they had that famous basement where Rachmaninoff and uh, Horowitz hung out. So just to then just, you know, before them, after them, and then all the artists and many genres is just an incredible honor. And just to have this instrument to play, I just, they wanted a statement from me. And, uh, and one, one of the things I said is uh, Stein, a Steinway piano is a piano you grow old with. And I also have to thank Park Avenue Pianos. They helped me find this amazing instrument that I look forward to growing with, continue growing with. 100%, 100%. So some of the places that are watching, I'll just put, it, put them up on the screen. Tell me if you've been there on tour. Vancouver, Diama yes. in Vancouver. You play Vancouver. I love Vancouver. Uh, Minneapolis, you play Minneapolis. Yes, yes. Boston, you must be Boston. I love Boston. I went to school there. Oh, that's right, that's right. Virginia in the house. Yay. Uh, Oakland in the house. You were just on the West Coast. Have you played a gig in Oakland? Yes. Been love everywhere. Oakland. Rochester, Yo New York. Yes, well, the festival unfortunately was canceled in June. I love that festival, one of my favorites. How about Seattle? Ah, I love Seattle. The Pike Market. I will take a later flight just so I can go there. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And what about Jersey? You yes, can... of course. The Garden State. All right, all right. Um, tell me now, um, it was actually fascinating knowing about your appointment as Jazz and Residence Scholar at Columbia University. Tell us about um, how that came about and what you did during your tenor um, at the one, this wonderful institution. Well, I don't want to, don't use the word scholar in front of my name. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> I was just the musician in the house. Um, uh, the Zuckerman Institute is the uh, flagship neuroscience research institute at Columbia University. And uh, Dr. Michael Shadlin, and uh, he's an amazing, brilliant neuroscientist uh, doing uh, research and uh, decision making. And uh, also Dr. Chris Washburn, he's the director of the Louis Armstrong a Jazz Studies Department at Columbia University. They always wanted to have a jazz artist in residence. They actually have a visual artist in residence at the Zuckerman already, and now they added a writer in residence. So I was so thrilled when they said, do you want to be the first one? Be the guinea pig. I said, sure. And so basically it was a year, it was 2019, they said, just, we want you to play meet in the in literal sense figurative sense we want you to meet all the scientists you want to meet with talk about whatever you're interested in learn what, whatever you want to learn and it was amazing you know I, I have a special interest in memory because i've been personally uh, impacted by the very terrible disease of dementia and alzheimer's and just 
these scientists, I met uh, th these scientists who are doing uh, research at the molecular cell, cell cellular level. What happens when we make a memory? What happens when we learn? What happens when that breaks down? I mean, it's it's amazing, like these Nobel Prize winners. And uh, and then also just a, a studying with another scientist who's researching bird songs, how birds, it's very interesting, I didn't know this, male birds teach, they're the singers, because they attract, that's how they attract their mate. And uh, they teach their sons the songs and the, the, the baby bird always adds a little bit something different of his own to the song and she actually put the egg of one kind of bird in another bird's kind of bird's nest to see what would happen to see if it, it would learn the song of the new parents and it did but it could also sing the old one so now the thing is like which one of these going to sing when he wants to have his, <laughs> find his wife because they mate for life it's it's yeah. amazing so um yeah many amazing opportunities like one of them that i that i've uh I'm very grateful. I've been blessed to continue is a collaboration with Arts and Minds. It's an organization that serves the dementia, Alzheimer's patient community and their caretakers in the Jazz Museum in Harlem. And a wonderful researcher scientist whose work was in memory, is in memory, Dr. Paula Croxon. And we do programs for the, the clients of Arts and Minds and also for the general public at the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. Fascinating. By the way, I mean, we're all learning a lot. So um, I think we should, again, be charging tuition. Um, <laughs> monetize, right? We should monetize them. So um, um, if you have a question for Helen, uh, please drop it in the comment field. I'll be sure to uh, pop it up on the screen. And while, while you're thinking of questions, I just also want to highlight Donna is watching from the hometown of Houston <gasps> in the house. Yay, so, H-Town. H-Town, all the way to Cambridgeshire, UK, Solomon and Cambridgeshire, Whoa. United Kingdom. So um, nice. someone has a question that wanted to know what's going on in the brain when you're doing a jazz solo. Does anyone know what's happening in the brain or has anyone studied <laughs> that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, one thing that music has been shown to do is it engages the entire brain in not just for players, for listeners too. It, in, it engages the memory portion, the visual cortex, and of course the audio cortex. But And that's why they think music and memory have a very strong connection because of, well, it's all together, right? It's the, it's the, the visual part, memories are visual in, in part, and, and a lot of times we have music associated with those experiences. So, um, you know, the brain I think is really, in terms of scientific research, the final frontier, and at least in terms of biology, because even the most complex models that they build, because I think that's that seems to be the model of scientific research. If you can build it, then you understand it. It's it doesn't it doesn't come close to the complexity. Like computers, think of the most powerful computer. It doesn't come yeah. close to what the human brain can do. So here's let's just say the busy brain's very busy. <laughs> yeah, here's a question. Sean Boo, who was on the show, he's, he asked, what happens in the brain right at the spark of an idea? Electrical signals. Yeah. That, that were electric, the electric signals. It's amazing. It's like, let's just talk, uh, uh, gosh, I'm blanking on his name, but the, uh, this guy, he did work with a, a sea slug, a, 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 a plesia, and because they had a very simple nervous system. And uh, what happens when they learn is they see these, it's, it's a complicated process. All these things happen, like gates open your cells, this neuron attaches, and a, this receptor, for, it's, yeah. yeah, we need and to. And if, if you want to know more, I mean, uh, a couple of neuroscientists, uh, Daniel Knutson at Stanford University, he looks at um, um, what's called uh, affect emotions and neuroscience. And he's actually at the beginning of a field called neuroeconomics and looks at the field, how, what's going on in your brain when you're looking at money. Also, Paul Glimcher at NYU is very involved in this field. So cognitive neur neur uh, neuropsychology and neuroscience, excuse me, is such a incredible province of new discoveries. I think we're just at the beginning stages of it. Um, back to music, Michael Costa wants to know, do you have any, uh, do you do any hand exercises or is performing consistently enough, uh, enough to stay in form? No, I definitely do hand exercises, but they're not anything really fancy, but I'm always trying to find new ways of basically Show some us. version. What's the hand <laughs> exercise? <laughs> oh, well, that happens on the keyboard. Oh, there's no like squeeze ball that you're like, oh, no, well, no, I don't do anything like that. I know some people do the squeezy things with the, 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 that have the little coils, wired coils things. I've tried those, but What were you no. going to show us? <laughs> well, you know, just skip. And then chord 
chords. Like I'm always like trying different ways. Like right now I'm working on this. Uh, oops, I need to practice that. You know, stuff like that. See if you had a handball. You'd be set. <laughs> <laughs> So I've got to ask, you're sitting on a, on a piano bench. What do you keep inside your piano bench? Well, these fancy grand piano benches don't have storage. Ah. Man, so I can't get store... Your, get your money back now. <laughs> well, no, everything's on the floor around me. Okay. You just can't see it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, what would you like to play uh, next? Um... I'm going to, uh, next weekend, uh, May 9th, would have been, actually, I was originally supposed to do a tribute to Cedar Walton, a fellow Texan, one of my favorite pianists, well known for his work in the Jazz Messengers and in his own right uh, for the Tribeca Performing Arts Center. Uh, that's been rescheduled to 2021. But then I also found out that that would have been the culminating day of Jazz at Lincoln Center's Essentially Ellington Festival, where it's a year-long program, but for a yeah. week, the best and brightest of the high school jazzers come to, they descend on New York City and they blow out Rose Theater. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was an, I'm an alum of that program. What? Twice, yeah. Oh, you play bass, right? That's right, right, barely, but yes, I do. And I was in, I, was, I went through that program. It was such an incredible program and it really changed my life in a way, so. See, y'all so, are lucky. I didn't yeah. do jazz in high school, so I didn't have the pleasure, but, um, it's an amazing program, and it would have been the culminating day. So they they asked me if I wanted to do a jazz from home at Dizzy's celebrating Duke, and I said yes. So I'm gonna play something from Duke Ellington called "Single Petal of a Rose." I think, I think we may have lost her audio. Did we lose Helen's audio? Can you guys hear me? Well, I think we lost Helen's audio, which is a shame. And uh, we're going to try to get her back, but I have, somehow to have to get her attention. But this is the joy of doing something on, uh, on, on Facebook and on streaming platforms. You never know when they, when they go wrong. So um, it was magical. It is magical. I'm glad you all can hear me, but I'm not the show. I'm just the host. So while we're um, while she's playing, and while we're trying to get her attention, trying to get her attention, um, and she's playing, I do want to put up something on the screen. So let's, if we can put up her last album on the screen, I just want to make sure we can talk about it, and we're going to try to do our best to to get her attention and see if we can troubleshoot this. So um, Helen's wonderful album, <clears throat> uh, let's put that up on the screen, And but with Dan Gioia, I never see Helen's song, Sung With Words, a collaboration with Dana Gioia. I never know how to say his name, but it's an incredible work. Um, 
uh, weaving together poetry and music, poetry and music. And you see the cover there, a lot of the words that were used in the poetry on the, on the project. So um, here she comes. H Helen, can you hear me? We somehow lost your audio, and I've been killing time talking, talking about your incredible album. I've been interviewing myself talking about your incredible album. So somehow, check out the, check out the chat, and, uh, and then uh, uh, you, you can f follow the instructions. And everyone who's watching, I want everyone to go to helensung.com while we're trying to troubleshoot this. Let's put that up on the screen, helensung.com. Check, check out her website. Get the merchandise. Go to the store. Find her on Spotify. And also, let's just walk through some of her albums that she's put out. Sung with words. We have Helen Sung, Anthem for a New Day. We're going to do the entire discography of Helen Sung while, while we're getting her back. Helen Sung, Reconception, Peter Washington. Louis Nash is on this record. I mean, that's, that's it. Are we back? Are we back? We're back. Okay. We're back. We were, somewhere, we were somewhere in the pedal of that, uh, listening to the we pedal. Yeah. Keep going. Pretend like you're halfway through it. Yeah. Hey, I did. I went somewhere different because of that. That's kind that, of cool. That was one. Of, that was a single <laughs> petal of a rose in two parts. <laughs> the other petal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The stem and the rose, uh, and, and the stem and the flower. So, um, very beautiful. I do want to make sure we mention uh, a few of your projects here. So, uh, first of all, if you if you enjoy that performance, there we go. Here comes all the applause. The the applause. See, <laughs> smiley faces. So if you have a question for Helen, drop it in the comments. Um, also, I want to ask about your last project. So let's put that album back up on the screen, your collaboration, your uh, a collaboration, yeah. um, poetry, music. How did that come about? What was it like recording it? And I loved how your guest last night was talking about Billy Collins and uh, was it Edith Wharton was her other favorite? Or I yeah, yeah. Remember. Um, yes, this is a jazz and poetry project, and it's funny because I remember when I told somebody, a friend of mine said, oh great, you took the two least popular things and put them together on one <laughs> album. 
<laughs> but I'm so proud of this project because it's the first time it's an album of all original music. And it's the first time I wrote music with words and to be sung. And also since kindergarten, people have been asking, teething me. I would be very rich if everybody had to give me a dollar every time they said, Helen, what song did you sing? <laughs> so I said, you know what? Let me let my last name work for me a bit. And uh, was so blessed to meet Dana Joy. I met him at the White House of all places when he was um, chairman of the National Endowment. And he was very, uh, he found it interesting that I, I like to read and I found it fascinating that he was a poet and he knew my two favorite science fiction writers, Ray Bradbury and Orson Scott Card. So we became friends and um, eventually he says, we need to write some songs together. And so we did. And the project is made possible by a wonderful organization called Chamber Music America, founded by the Doris Duke Trouble Foundation. So thank you for the opportunity to create, create that. Yeah. Talk to me about um, working with them. Did you write the music? Oh, did you write the lyrics and you set it to music? Is that how it worked? Did, the po did it begin with the poems first? Uh, every which way. I love how Dana said it. He said, we just did whatever worked. Like some of them, he, he gave me the words. Some of them, I took a phrase to him. I was, uh, <laughs> I was complaining about a guy with a girlfriend of mine and, and uh, you know, what women do when we get together. And uh, I said, I wish people would just say what they mean and mean what they say. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, that has a rhythm. Say what you mean, mean what you say. say what... So I took it to him. I said, can you write a poem? And he did. <laughs> Yep. And then others' poems, he said he wrote thinking about my music. So there was not one way. Got it, got it. Uh, let's walk through some of your discography here. So we, had, we were just talking about them. I don't want to leave people hanging. We were talking about <laughs> and them for a new day. Talk, talk to us about this. We're going to do this uh, lightning round style. So talk to us about <laughs> and them for a new day. This was my one major label release so far on Concord Jazz. What an amazing experience. Incredible band exciting that uh, I wrote songs I've never written before. I felt like this is where I plant my flag, like this is who Helen the Sung is, because I came to jazz so late, and you know, so many voices telling you you need to check this out, all well-meaning, but this one is like, okay, this is, I'm standing behind this. Yeah, it is a beautiful record. I listened to it earlier today. So what about Reconception? This was my jazz trio record with the Rolls Royce of jazz trio rhythm sections with Peter Washington and Lewis Nash and all arrangements of standards that I love. Where was it recorded? You remember? Canoop, Canoop Studios, which no longer exists, unfortunately, in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And it's on the steeplechase, Nils Winter. Produced. Got it, got it. Yeah. Next album, Lightning Round. <gasps> recorded See? live at the Jazz Standard. <laughs> oh, really? This is, this is live at Jazz Standard? Yes, yes. I got it. Yeah. Okay. What's the repertoire like here? Uh, I think mix of what, uh, just modern explorations. I, I had one of my favorite drummers, same high school, same hometown, Eric Harland, and amazing bassist, Lonnie Plaxico, Plaxico and one of my favorite tenor players, uh, Seamus Blake. Quartet, straight yeah, up. Yeah, they're all great, great artists. What about, the, what about? Yeah, Seamus is amazing. Uh, what about the next This is my album? jazz and classical experiment. I wrote a parallel suite to go with a piece by Albinez called Se Llama España. See, I know, oh, hablo un poco español. <laughs> and so... See, we had a we had a Albinez feature yesterday, actually. And by the way, yes, uh, by the way, um, if you, those watch, you can tell she likes to read because she frequently uses, uses her name in the title sungbird it's good i like it no i like it it's, it's a, a good puns you you have a great name a musical name sung is a great musical name and i, I think it could be it's 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 wonderful actually it makes it very i like songbird thank you thank you yeah so i wrote a parallel suite so i intertwined the two who did the artwork this is a uh, art, uh by a young artist named walker fee and uh my roommate actually at the time, she was a design, she is a designer in the fashion industry and she gave us the inspiration and I told him and he ran with it and this is what he came up with. Gotcha. Do you have anything else in the Helen Sung <laughs> album lineup here? Uh, Let's see I here. have two more. Uh, this is on Sunnyside. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Yes. Helena Stick. <laughs> This is on the Fresh Down, Three. Fresh Down New Talent, and this was my second album, actually. 
it's right but you use your name three oh, times yeah, in the right title. okay but this one <laughs> this one wasn't my idea so <laughs> okay yeah. guilty is charged no it's <laughs> fine i think it works it works all right next one my first one ever push i ju- oh gosh it feels like a lifetime ago it really kind of was yeah yeah pushed. It was a sum, some summation of my, I guess, first two or three years of living in New York. Just the, the sheer visceral trauma and wonderful everything that it was. Right, right. You have a live at a Blue Note album, too. Oh, yes. Um, yes. That see? was really fun. Thank you. This is the historical retrospective <laughs> of Helen's song career. Actually, I did meet a Helen um, on... We, we collaborated on the uh, Karen Allison Shoulder to Shoulder Project, um, yes. which this is the 100-year anniversary of the women's right to vote. Helen played piano, was an incredible partner in making this project. What was it like working with Karen and, and the group on this production? Oh, what an honor. It was a complete pleasure. And, you know, I just, I know you don't like to toot your own horn, but I like to toot a little bit. Just, you know, what you do. Uh, like Where's the mute button? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like producing a show like this is a lot that goes into it and just the fact that you, there are so many other things you'd be doing I, I did a little snooping on you and I couldn't believe all the stuff you done <laughs> like you know author lecturer philanthropist producer it's pretty I, I, I'm just a host I'm just yeah. a host and of the, the show good yeah yeah evening. <laughs> well you know I like to <laughs> yeah <laughs> Hey, a question here for you. Uh, so check out that record. A question here from uh, Jen Zing. She says, how about a vinyl Actually, song record someday for out. his vinyl notes? I recorded notes. a duo record with Marquise Hill, an incredible trumpet player from Chicago, uh, in the waning days of 2019 for a boutique label named uh, JMI Records. Steve Mandel and Jake, he has a secret name. But OK, I'm going to say Jake Cohn. I hope he doesn't mind. Um, <laughs> amazing guys. They're audiophiles. Uh, they do, it's going to be an LP. I can't believe it. I'm super excited. It's coming out sometime. This What's week. the name of it? it? I don't think we've decided yet. Okay. If that new. Well, we know the mo- this could be the fourth with your name in it. So no, just... no, <laughs> no. I ended at three. <laughs> okay. Okay. I hear you. Um, there's there's Helen in, in the the band for the, with Karen Allison. So uh, okay. we'd love to hear one more. And for everyone watching at home, uh, please go to helensong.com. Check her out on Spotify. Buy the music. Uh, experience a Helen song experience by buying the full catalog, which you've seen up here today. And um, remember, what the, we're going to ask on the other side of this, what the word of the day. There's your website. What is the word of the day that I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast? Will there be a champion? So let us know <laughs> what the word of the day is. Um, and we would love to hear one last one. What would you like to play for us? Thank you. Well, as a classical pianist, I never thought about writing music. And studying with Ron Carter, the great bassist of the Monk Institute, he said, you want to develop your own voice, you write music. So we had to write a new song for him every two weeks. So this is the first song I ever wrote after I graduated. And I thought it was apt for the situation we find ourselves in. And it's a piece I still, it just kicks me in the you know what every time. So let's give it another go. This is called The Waiting Game.
everyone. <laughs> Helen Song. Let me get my camera going again. Yeah. <laughs> See? Bravo. Oh my God, you cracked me up. <laughs> Where's my house plan? <laughs> oh yeah. Look at all the love you're getting, my goodness. Oh, you're you know how to you know make you a jazz artist feel special. <laughs> you're too much? Oh. Boom. <laughs> hey, that was awesome. Um, oh. We got some uh, some um, claps, some hearts, oh. some, um, some of this, some wows. Um, after which you go back and see all the, the love that you're getting. Yeah. So Thank we really, you so you're such an important and a, a vibrant member of our arts community. I can't wait to see you um, play again in person. Um, and until that time, just keep doing what you're doing because we all love you so much. Thank you, Kabir. Same to you. Thank you so much. Gratitude to all the love and energy and the money you're putting into this. We don't take that for granted. We so appreciate it. And you are in the annals of jazz history. <laughs> Some, history. <laughs> Some history. So for everyone everyone watching at home, a couple of things first. We do have, I think first time in a, ever, our first winner of the word of the day. Can you give a big shout out? I want to see we had Michael Shadlin. He's the, the, the neuroscientist. See, and Michael Shadlin. Oh. You get the puppy. <laughs> see, Helen got the plant, but you get the puppy trophy. So... Michael Shadlin, you are the defending champion of the word of the day. Will you be able to defend your crown on the next edition, 10 p.m. Eastern tonight? Good segue, Terry Barber, incredible countertenor. We're going opera tonight. He'll be performing. Uh, and we'll see if Michael can defend his crown. All right. Uh, one last thing. A big shout out to Sandra and Camilo. Yes. Let's put their website up on the screen. If you need any kind of audio services, please reach out to them. If you're making a new album that's currently untitled, please reach out to them. Uh, if you have um, audio, if you need to do anything that's in the realm of uh, video conferencing, please reach out to them. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon. Siesta time here in Atlanta. Take care. See you tonight. <laughs>